This week on Christian World News, religious freedom at risk here in America. See what happened when this Christian baker refused a gay wedding. Plus, capturing the youth of Africa, how song, dance and ministry are delivering kids from hopelessness. And Friends of Zion, discovering the hidden history of how Christians helped found the Jewish state. Religious liberty is under threat in America. Hello, everyone. Welcome to this week's edition of Christian World News. I'm George Thomas. In Oregon, uh, a a couple refused to pay a $135,000 fine for refusing to bake a cake for a gay wedding. Well, now the state is threatening to place a lien on their home until the fine is paid. Abigail Robertson spoke with the Christian couple who say their constitutional rights are at stake. And guess what? They are not backing down. The trouble for Aaron and Melissa Klein began two years ago when a woman came into their bakery asking for a wedding cake. Usual day, she came in, um, sat down. I had some cake for her to try. I asked her for the bride and groom's name. She told me it was going to be two brides. At that point, I was apologetic. I said, I'm sorry, we can't do this, and I did not mean to waste your time. And she got up and walked out. Uh, That was the extent of the encounter. A few weeks later, the Kleins faced a civil complaint for failing to provide the couple equal service in a place of public accommodation, a citation equal to a traffic violation in the state. We were uh, of the mindset that we were fully within our rights. I mean, everybody believes that that adage, you know, that we, we reserve the right to refuse business for, you know, any reason. The couple originally sought just $400 the price of one of Melissa's custom cakes. But Oregon Labor Commissioner Brad Avakian decided they deserved more, awarding them $135,000 in emotional damages. He then ordered the clients to cease and desist from openly professing that they won't serve gay weddings because of their Christian beliefs. Since turning down the lesbian couple, the clients have had to close their business and have spent the past two years fighting to protect their religious liberty, and now they fight to protect their freedom of speech. It's First Amendment, free speech. You're looking at a government agency telling a private individual what they can and cannot say. This should scare every American. I'm shocked at the fact that I wasn't even, um, um, I wasn't even charged, like I wasn't even charged, and I'm told, I'm being told that I have to be silent. And to me, that's like, I, I don't understand that. That doesn't, I mean, I don't see how somebody can tell me to be quiet. And frankly, I, I'm not going to be quiet about my faith. Hans von Spakovsky of the Heritage Foundation says the clients could seek legal action against Commissioner Avakian for his clear prejudices in their case. I actually think they have a potential civil rights case against Avakian. Uh, he clearly has acted in a biased prejudiced manner. Um, He's acted as judge, jury, and executioner in this case, um, and has acted punitively against them. Spikovsky also feels the ruling is intended to intimidate other Christians. I think the churches should be getting behind the Kleins, but I have no doubt that they're not saying anything about this because uh, the clear intent of the state of Oregon and Commissioner Vakian is to intimidate the Christian community. That's why he's imposed this huge punishment on the client. And it's very clear that intimidation is working. Aaron and Melissa have seen mixed support from Christians in Portland. Even the churches, no, no, I'm not saying all of them, but a percentage of the churches said basically they've made this mess, they're on their own. Professor Michael Gurney from Portland's Multnomah University sees this mixed reaction as generational. I think for the younger generation, they don't understand why, uh, why Christians would refuse. Uh, for them, it's, it's not that they see this, they would see the act of baking a cake as endorsing. It's just, it's a matter of equality. I think we're going to see more and more uh, of this encroachment upon religious liberties. And I think that, that we, have to, we have to really um, be prepared for that. Despite the hardships and long road ahead, Aaron and Melissa remain confident God will see them through. For me personally, it has been, I mean, it's weird to say, but an amazing experience. I've learned so much through all this. I, God has taught me to trust Him. 
incredible. Abigail Jones has now. I'm struck by the fact that her, her response to how she's handling this and how God is helping her through, through this. In fact, the entire couple, what did they say to you? I just, meeting with them was so great because they are so positive and they really believe that this is just a challenging season that they're going through yeah. and they are leaning on God, they're trusting in Him and they really believe that He's going to pull them through. Mm -hmm. And even just a couple of days on Melissa, on the Sweet Cakes by Melissa Facebook page, they posted, in the midst of our trials and struggles, we should find ourselves drawing closer to the Lord. It's absolutely amazing what the Lord does for you when you lay everything at His, at his feet. So they're really just encouraging other wow. people going through hard times just to depend on God. I'm curious, what what can Christians do to help? I mean, I, except for like perhaps pray for the family, but what, what can we do to help them directly? So financially, they've raised over $350,000 and they've actually broken the record on continue to give for the largest campaign ever that the site has had. Okay. So right now they really just need prayer. I mean, pray for the family, sure. pray for the kids, pray even for Labor Commissioner of Akian, yeah. that God will just soften his heart to this couple. Yeah. Okay, terrific. Thank you for this update, Abigail Robertson. Thank you so much. Okay, well, we are moving overseas to Pakistan, where Asya Bibi, the Pakistani Christian, as I mentioned, she was sentenced to death for blasphemy. Well, right now she will not be executed. The Pakistani Supreme Court overturned her sentence this week. Bibi has suffered in prison for more than six years and is reportedly in ill health. The three-judge panel suspended the death sentence given by two lower courts. A new hearing date will be scheduled for Bibi's case. In the meantime, she remains in prison. Earlier, I spoke with CBN News Chief International Correspondent Gary Lane about this stunning development. What specifically did the Supreme Court here decide? They overturned her death sentence. And what they said basically is the decision of two lower courts, the Sessions Court and the Appeals Court, uh, both were in error when they uh, found her guilty of blasphemy against Mohammed and sentencing her to death. So she will not be executed, George. Uh, remind our viewers uh, again uh, why she's in prison and why did she receive the death sentence? Well, you remember six years ago, Asya Bibi was working in a fruit orchard with some Muslim colleagues and they got into a heated discussion about their faith and she said something like, uh, my Jesus has uh, saved me for eternity. What has your prophet ever done for you? And immediately she was accused of blasphemy. A crowd gathered around. They started beating her and kicking her. Police came, hauled her away. She's been in jail ever since for okay. about six years now, charged with blasphemy against Mohammed, which in Pakistan, the sentence is death if you're convicted. What are the chances that uh, she will get released as a result of this, uh, this, uh, this ruling? Well, that's what we're all hoping and praying for, is it not? But what will uh, likely is to happen but now is the Supreme Court, the Pakistani Supreme Court, will schedule a rehearing, a new hearing for her. Who knows mm. when they will schedule that? It could be months, could be years, but then it will be reheard and who knows, maybe she will be uh, allowed, uh, set free from prison based on time already served, mm -hmm. which makes her one of Seven the years, longest. Right? Seven years, Well, it's over uh, six years. It was six, six years, years okay. in June, yeah. which actually makes her one of the longest uh, to ever serve. Ayub Masi served about six years. I think she's a little bit beyond that. Uh, another Pakistani yes. uh, Christian as yes. well. Uh, in a land where Christians are constantly under pressure, yes. uh, yeah. whether it's from suicide attacks to uh, just discrimination, mm -hmm. physical persecution, uh, psychological persecution, uh, how are Christians reacting to Asya Bibi's case? Oh, they're elated, George. The, the Christians are saying, wow, this is something we've been looking forward to. We've been praying and mm -hmm. praying for this, and they're hoping it's a sign of good things to come. But yeah. what they really need is a strong leader to stand up and be an advocate for Asya and to say it's time to get rid of the 295 blasphemy law. Mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, that has happened to others, people like Salman Tasir. Uh, the governor, a Muslim governor of uh, Punjab, was uh, was killed because he did exactly that. And again, just to remind our viewers, there is a provision within the Constitution that says if you yes. were to desecrate the Quran, if you were to say something uh, negative about the yes. Prophet Muhammad, you will be slapped with this blasphemy law. That That is the 295 blasphemy law. There are three parts to it. Blasphemy against the Quran, against Islam, and against Muhammad. The most severe is Muhammad, yeah. punishable by death. You have, you talked about uh, the 
you know, the Pakistani believers have been praying. The global community yes. really has rallied and for six petitions. years, right? Exactly. I mean, th th do you think that played a role in her release? Well, I know that there or was... In her, the, the court case? There was one petition that was signed by probably close to a million people. I know that the Voice of the Martyrs circulated, and others were advocating for her. Two people gave their lives for her, were yeah, killed that's right. as being advocates. But, uh, yeah, I think that had something to do with it. But there's tremendous pressure, George, on these, yeah. on these judges in Pakistan. They're at the lower levels, they're either bribed or they're intimidated and say, hey, we'll be, you'll be killed or we'll come after you if you don't rule on our, the way we want you to rule, yeah. uh, which is blasphemy and convict this person. As he said, Gary has visited uh, Asya Bibi's family and he's followed her story from the very beginning. To see more of his reports on this case, check out his blog, The Global Lane, at cbnnews.com. Coming up, teaching Africa's slum kids how to sing and dance their way to freedom. Hello, I'm Terry Newsom. Did you know there are more than 148 million orphans in the world today? 148 million. But it was three little girls that taught me about the plight of orphans. Eight years ago, my husband and I spent nearly a month immersed in the daily activities of a Ukrainian orphanage as we waited to adopt three sisters. I saw firsthand the utter loneliness, the pain of rejection, and the overwhelming desire to be loved. That experience changed me forever. And out of it grew a ministry from my heart called Orphan's Promise, Today, we're helping orphans and vulnerable children in more than 50 countries worldwide. Thousands of children are now in safe homes. They're being educated and they're learning life skills. I'm asking you to join with me and become family to these children. Will you call the number on your screen right now? Because every child deserves a chance to be happy. Inside every child is a hero, a leader, a friend to others. Someone who helps out. Who does the right thing. Who dreams of what they can be. But they still need our help. What should I do? What should I say? How should I feel? That's where Superbook comes in. It provides moral and spiritual truths through situations children can relate to, teaching God's Word to the children you love. Join the Superbook DVD Club and receive Superbook's newest episodes as they're available, plus two copies to share with others, all for your gift of only $25. Get Superbook today and watch the miracles happen. And welcome back to the broadcast. The president of Nigeria says a multinational Africa force will take on the radical Islamic group Boko Haram. The group has killed thousands of Muslims and Christians in Nigeria and is responsible for the kidnapping of hundreds of schoolgirls from the Christian village of Chibok last year. President Muhammadu Buhari said Boko Haram would be defeated in a year and a half or less. A music phenomenon, by the way, is sweeping airwaves, clubs, and schools in Africa. They call themselves K-Crew. CBN reporter Angela Zadopak traveled to Kenya to experience the excitement firsthand and brings us this look at a unique music ministry for Christ. They may just look like a bunch of kids dancing and singing around the city streets of Kenya, or you might even spot them throughout the slums of Africa. But Kumbamba, or better known as K-Crew, is a group of dancers and DJs sweeping the youth by using music for ministry. Energetic, spiritual, and uplifting. This is just a brief description of what fans experience when they see K-Crew in action. K-Crew is a youth ministry that seeks to evangelize young people using urban gospel music and biblically-based convictions. And they've done just that, reaching more and more since Coca-Cola Kenya began sponsoring their jam-packed performances. People don't stay in their seats for long as they worship with their dancing shoes on. My name is Thomas Noll. I was in the secular industry and I was one of the professional dancers and one of, one of the most famous dancers in Kenya. Dancing is the ultimate fun expression. If there's a wedding, there's dancing. Even if a president comes to Africa, we have to dance for them. So we have to use dancing as a tool of medium. 
With music and dance as their tool of influence, K-Crew is creating a new formula for outreach. Kenya is, has become such a fusion of sounds. Uh, we're fusing a lot of our local sounds like Lingala and Kapuka and Zouk. In order for us to reach the kingdom, we realize that we need to hit this massive population. Part of their outreach includes a weekly seven-hour television program that reaches over one million viewers. As promised, we have an amazing, amazing guest. With many of the DJs raised in Africa's slums, they often return home to perform. Dandora Slum is home to more than one million people. K-Crew brings a message of hope using hip-hop as a positive community force. I'm thinking by the time we close at 6 o'clock, there might be like a thousand people here. They also take their ministry to the schools, beginning with dance and ending with the word of the day. So self-esteem drives peer pressure in them. And for us, those are the challenges we're trying to fight. To fadali change your life. Uta soma bila yesu, lakini uta survive. Una do drug. There's been an attack uh, on the, in Kenya, on the, but we are courageously moving forward. Reflecting on recent attacks by a radical Islamic group in Kenya, DJ Mickey was inspired to create a song about the victims called Fallen Heroes. K-Crew is currently expanding to acquire their own radio station, supported by their U.S. partners, Reach Youth Global. With gospel music currently being the number one form of entertainment in Kenya, K-Crew is keeping their message traditional, but presenting it in an unconventional way. I'm Angela Zadapek, CBN News, Kenya. Up next, we visit a state-of-the-art museum that brings to life a little-known part of Israel's history. CBN presents The Transforming Word. Pat Robertson records powerful verses of health and healing. Let all that I am praise the Lord. May I never forget the good things He does for me. He forgives all my sins and heals all my diseases. My youth is renewed like the eagles. A new DVD and audio CD set by Pat Robertson. The Transforming Word, verses for health and healing. Hello, I'm Terry Newsom. Did you know there are more than 148 million orphans in the world today? 148 million. But it was three little girls that taught me about the plight of orphans. Eight years ago, my husband and I spent nearly a month immersed in the daily activities of a Ukrainian orphanage as we waited to adopt three sisters. I saw firsthand the utter loneliness, the pain of rejection, and the overwhelming desire to be loved. That experience changed me forever. And out of it grew a ministry from my heart called Orphan's Promise. Today, we're helping orphans and vulnerable children in more than 50 countries worldwide. Thousands of children are now in safe homes. They're being educated and they're learning life skills. I'm asking you to join with me and become family to these children. Will you call the number on your screen right now? Because every child deserves a chance to be happy. Kids, we want them to grow up knowing God's word. But in today's busy world, sometimes we could use some help. The free Superbook Kids Bible app has fun stuff your kids will love. They'll have a blast learning the Bible, playing great games, watching cool videos, right, follow me. discovering heroes in the Bible. They'll have fun while they learn God's Word. The Superbook Kids Bible app, available on iTunes and the Google Play Store. Well, the founding of the modern state of Israel has been called a miracle. Few people realize Christians, they actually played a major role in building and protecting the Jewish nation. Now, a state-of-the-art museum in Jerusalem shows the world this hidden history. Chris Mitchell takes us there. The museum greets visitors with a profound introduction, stunning aerials of Israel, while a map traces the land given by God to the 12 tribes, all set to originally scored music. The museum uses state-of-the-art technology. For example, this area is one of the largest touch panel exhibits anywhere in the world. Touch one of these panels, and you can find out more information about Christian Zionists throughout history. The modern features like video mapping aim to tell new audiences 
one of the most compelling and often unknown stories about modern Israel, the role of Christian Zionism. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu addressed this history in a 2012 speech. I don't believe that the Jewish state and modern Zionism would have been possible without Christian Zionism. I think that uh, the many Christian supporters of the rebirth of the Jewish state and the ingathering of the Jewish people in the 19th century made possible the rise of Jewish Zionism. American Mike Evans built the museum to spread the word of Christian Zionism's place in history. Wanting a home for Christians to celebrate their heroes and their history. I found no place in Israel where Bible-believing Christians can go to, and they have heroes and they have history. The museum is based on years of research and this two-volume set written by Evans. There's so many of them. I mean, if you just take George Bush, 1844, this guy was a Hebrew professor, and he wrote a book that sold a million copies on the restoration of Israel. And yes, his two relatives were U.S. presidents. Others like Ord Wingate formed the first Jewish fighting unit in nearly 2,000 years, the beginning of the Israeli modern army we see today. Women like Corrie ten Boom and her family. The Nazis killed her father and sister, and she suffered in a concentration camp because they hid Jews during the Holocaust. And Swedish diplomat Raoul Wallenberg faced death to save Jews. In the dead of winter, Wallenberg joined the thousands of Jewish prisoners in the death marches to Auschwitz, trying to save anyone he could. What was it that to face death, I realized, number one, it was their Bible. They had an intimate relationship with the living Lord, and they loved the Word of God, and they were willing to commit their life for it. And with the Word of God came promises to the Jewish people. Those scriptural promises are woven through the exhibits, from Ezekiel to Isaiah to Abraham. According to the ancient writings, one day God appeared to Abram and spoke the words that would give birth to the nation of Israel. For visitors, the experience is wow. It's an experience like, like no other. I mean, you go in there and it's, it's interactive. You'll learn a lot of things that you probably never even learned. I thought this was a, one of the most impressive things I have seen in Israel in the time that I've been here. Many never knew the history and now want to tell others. I am going to tell everyone that I can think of, people in my synagogue, to come here to see how this beautiful land of Israel was not built just by the Jews, but by the Christians and the wonderful people who risked their lives to make us a homeland. For Evans, the museum lets the Jewish people know that although enemies surround Israel, they're not alone. They see Auschwitz and what they went through, and they see the alienation in the world today, and they come through it and they say, we're not alone. There's Christians who really love us. And it's, it's just amazing to see that. It gives me hope I'm not alone. That's enough. Chris Mitchell, CBN News, Jerusalem. Terrific, Chris. Thank you so much. Well, you can take a virtual online tour of the Friends of Zion Museum. Find the link at our CBNnews.com website. We'll be back right after this. CBN presents The Transforming Word, Verses for Health and Healing, a new DVD and audio CD set by Pat Robertson. I'm going to teach you some of the principles I've learned as God has revealed them to me about how His kingdom works. The Transforming Word will show you how the Word of God can transform your life. You'll learn to experience God's miraculous kingdom and see how speaking the words of Scripture will bring power to your life and to those you love. I've also recorded selected verses for you that you can listen to, that you can memorize, and that you can speak aloud, so that you can see the transforming power of God at work in your life. Pat Robertson records powerful verses of health and healing. Oh, Lord, my God, I cried to you for help, and you restored my health. Get the transforming word. Available now. When you give, 
smiles grow bigger. When you care, homes are happier. When you comfort, the hurt goes away. When we all come together to love, miracles happen. Life, it's meant to be lived fully. Jesus said it, I came to give you life, life to the fullest, life in your family, life in your finances, life in your body, mind, and spirit, life in your everyday. At CBN.com, we're taking what Jesus said seriously. We're here to help you discover life. Life, live it fully. CBN.com. Actress Saroma Downey, famous for her work on Christian movies and TV, says she has had enough of all the negative stories in the news. So she created a positive and inspirational TV show called Answered Prayers. Jennifer Wishon brings us that story. Answered Prayers, they're what Christians seek daily, and often God answers just when we think all hope is lost. Tired of the discouraging news on TV, actress and producer Roma Downey decided to look for inspiration. They are moments of divine intervention. She went to churches across the country asking for stories of answered prayers. The response was overwhelming. 20 of those modern day miracles will be relived in her new series, Answered Prayers. You know, on Touched by an Angel, we used to say that coincidence was God's way of remaining anonymous. And you see in these stories how God shows up again and again. It's reported that the tornado has touched down. As Christians, we know that God is constantly answering prayers. He's constantly moving in the world. But for many people watching this, it may be surprising. It's reminding people that they're not alone, that God is real, and that God hears them when they cry out. We're living in a time when many Americans um, fear their religious liberty is under attack. Um, and at the same time, you're putting a show about answered prayers on the air. What do you make of the timing of this launch? I'm just really encouraged. We're hoping that the show might birth a prayer revival. We know that we need prayer now more than ever. There's a lot of fear in our nation, I think. You know, there's a lot of things going on in our world that are very scary. And I think it's just good to be reminded that our God is an almighty God. And when we reach out to him, um, he hears us. Answered Prayers premieres on TLC this Sunday at so 10 p.m. Tragic. Eastern. Even if you don't believe, there will be a moment where you will scratch your head and say, there's no logical explanation for any of the outcomes of these stories. Something supernatural is going on here. Jennifer Wish on CBN News, New York. Thanks, Jennifer. Finally this week, CBN Superbook is now airing on Bebel TV, Germany's largest Christian channel. Two episodes air each weekend, reaching children throughout Germany, Austria, Switzerland, and other neighboring European nations. Viewers can also connect via, with Superbook on Facebook and the Superbook website, where they can play games, learn more about God, and discover Bible stories in fun and exciting ways. Well, folks, that is it for us this week. Thank you so much for joining us. Until next week, from all of us here, goodbye and God bless you.